I'll try to remember your question and include it to a booklet. We are making these booklets after retreats and we need the Q&As also. Um, yeah, so your question? Ah. It's hard to see. As soon as you try to see, something else comes up. It's like trying to catch the moment, right? The moment you try to catch the moment, the moment is gone. So, you can stop at one experience and see it, but that means you have manifested more, the, more experiences in trying to see one experience. So then you try to see your seeing and that is also another experience that you are seeing. But you can isolate it. No. Okay, I saw this. What is the origin? What is the uh, dependent core arising of this? So there is this internal I, the object I saw, and then I consciousness. And when you are doing that, actually you have gone very far because everything now has to come through memory. Because See, that, that actual seeing, I think we need to slow down a lot to catch the actual seeing. There is more insight in that. For that, we need to do a lot of tranquility meditation and more than two days of meditation, continuous, no disturbances. And then when it comes to the third or fourth day, we may be able to very, very very much get, get over any boredom, any past habits, and then start seeing, seeing that slowness and seeing it as it becomes. But even if you are trying to see it that slow, um, it's only a moment or two. Because as soon as you begin analyzing something, you get busy in your mind. Um, so that is that is the answer to that question. We we are we are. No, we were talking about doing more than two days of retreat here, because now we have the space, uh, which is one of my dreams. You know, I I I don't like two two days retreat. The retreats I have led are usually 10 days. So in 10 days retreats, we, we don't do anything else. We do the retreat. We have a systematic progress that you, you become interested in practice, perhaps on the third or fourth day, or before you are, are ready to go home. The home, <laughs> and then you are really doing it. So when you go to IMS, Inside Meditation Society in Barry, Massachusetts, where you go for retreat, um, they do how many days sometimes minimum? The month and three month retreats. Okay, from three days to seven, yeah. And like in Illinois, there is this Dhamma Pak. Dhamma Prakasha, I think Dhamma Prakasha Meditation Center, Vipassana Center, they do um, 10 days retreat. Their meditation, meditation retreats are 10 days. You're welcome. Welcome into the place, I mean, not you are welcome. You didn't do that. <laughs> I thought you will disappear quickly. You're welcome to sit with us. So, um, th those retreats, when you do it in a longer period of time, gives you more results. So, that's why 
Now, I don't know if this facility will allow us for residential retreats. Uh, in that case, we may have to book hotels, but um, now we have a space. Maybe people can do camping here downstairs, sleep everywhere, and not go home <laughs> for seven days, at least, and see how, how it changes your practice. And I am as you know, Pante Buddhrakita was a teacher there who was one of my students and he invited us. Nobody, you know, really breaks silence there except the teacher. And they are very serious on that. So don't be mad at me when I say, shh, that is because I'm helping you and I don't have any enmity over you. I'm just helping your practice. Because when I see somebody talking, I see how it disturbs the person who is not trying to uh, talk, right? That could happen and that way I'm helping everybody to maintain it. Sometimes we don't realize, like downstairs and up here, there's only thin layer. So I think next time when we do a retreat, all the food arrangements should uh, happen in the other kitchen far away from, from this, so they have a separate entrance. You could see in the morning practice, we were doing so well, and then people started entering from this door, and how it affects, you know, sounds should not matter, but it mattered, right? It did affect the practice, kind of. We were doing fine, and then it started affecting us. So that's why in the sutra, we read, go to an empty hut place where you are less disturbed. Anyway, back to your question about, you know, you said you saw the cessation part. Um, and I always thought we, are, we can see it. We can see the disappearance with our knowledge and with our analytical understanding. We may not necessarily, we can, we are kind of reading it, but not actually seeing a cessation, because in the actual ex experience of cessation, there is no seeing. There can't be any seeing, because the seer has long disappeared, and you emerge from the experience to realize, okay, now everything ceased in that period of time. There was a certain length of time that everything has ceased and let me as well name it as a cessation experience but you are naming it labeling it afterwards for more details we may need to go back to that sutra we read Majjhimanikaya 43 Chula Vedala Sutra about shorter series of questions and answers there it says it doesn't have to be even cessation. Even after at attaining the eighth attainment, which is neither perception nor non-perception, you only see it after emerging from it. So you can see the, the process that you know, leads to cessation. When this happens, that could happen, and then the next could happen. We don't actually see it until we are ready to see it. I don't know whether you actually in cessation, which I cannot judge. <laughs> the diss dissolution. That is what we are seeing, and of course, that we can see. Uh, dissolution. If this didn't exist, either what is either what is the Pali for that? Uh, you must mean sati, when this is idang hoti, this comes to be. You must mean asati, when this is not idang na hoti, this does not come to be. You must so pada, with the arising of this idang upajati, this arises. You must niroda, with the cessation of this idang nirujjati, this ceases. So. That is very, very, um, like, first, very um, earliest teachings of the Buddha. Because he saw, started seeing things 
in this format and teaching. So that, that uh, also connects with uh, the 12 links of dependent or co-origination. When this is there, that arises, and when that is there, this arises, and there is all this cycle. And our entry to that was from one of the sensory experiences, seeing, hearing, or something, and seeing how that experience is manifested, or how it can we undo it, not practically, but analytically. So, we didn't get to, uh, did I answer your question enough? So, we went everywhere, but yeah, your question? No. Does the mind generate neutral thoughts without previous experiences? Mind generates exciting things without previous experiences. So that excitement could be not so neutral, could be um, happiness. after the experience and reviewing it afterwards. Oh, that was a positive experience. Oh, that was a negative experience. Only that is the, the data we have to process. But the idea of positivity and negativity comes from how you feel it, and those are informed from previous other experiences, which may not be similar, um, but we use our self-instincts to determine that. You see that? Sometimes, okay, for an example, well, let me say this. Um, when somebody is sad, don't try to do this practically. In psychology, they say, you can say, oh, it's exciting that you are sad. <laughs> It's not a good thing to say, right? But they say you can go from sad to something exciting easily than someone who is someone connecting with that sadness. Because that excitement, if somebody say, oh, I'm crushed. Oh, how exciting you say that. Then that shifts so quickly. You know psychology, right? You are practicing it. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, I think this is the thing they talk about, you know. Now, you use, like when a baby is crying, you say, wow, what an ex ex exciting experience you had. And the baby get confused there, <laughs> and they stop crying, and they, they, they start thinking, oh, this must be a good thing. And immediately the environment changes. But if you start crying, it, it lasts longer and the experience may take time to end. See what I'm saying? It's just a, just a thing. But with new experiences, they, they are neutral at first, but what comes next can be exciting. And that excitement or negativity is informed by previous positive or neg negative experiences because what it generates can be happy hormones or not so happy hormones, not so much related to happiness. Any other thoughts on that from the, from the group? Once again? Until you declare what it is, it is nothing. Um, oh yeah. You can declare it good or bad. It's nothing until then. I think it's true. But we do always declare, though. We do always label it, right? The attempt is to stay not declaring. Uh, can we declare? Like, I mean, knowingly, I, I am not saying not to declare. I'm saying I can declare it anything I want. Sad, but not, I don't have a body sad, I can call it experience or something. 
Okay. Who is calling it experience? <laughs> <laughs> If there is someone calling it, and there, there is a problem. The individuality, labeling or self-creation. It is a feeling. Right, that's true. Unless you have so much control over it, um, you may not have a choice because it's conditioned. When something is conditioned in a certain way, sadness is conditioned now that sadness has to manifest because all the conditions are ready for sadness to manifest. The problem is sadness converts into anger and happiness converts into pleasure and looking more pleasure of that and uh, there are, we tend to dislike certain things and like certain things and what is that? Craving. So we are very close to falling back in a, into a trap of, of course we don't have a choice, we haven't prepared, we haven't, we have not unconditioned ourselves. Oh, there is no problem in doing that, which means you are a healthy human being who is able to identify what is happening to you. <laughs> so, don't try to stop that. <laughs> we don't want to be stones who don't have feelings, right? Um, in our Dharma language, when you speak the Dharma language, um, before even you condition, you are vulnerable to such conditions, defilements have gone um, and your defilements don't put, you know, put you in that trap. You can see, oh, if I went down that road, this, these are the results, these are the scenes I will see. But I have done that, numerous births and within this birth as well and let me as well get rid of it, get out of this cycle and not be affected. But that is a very much developed mind. And saying, okay, this is this, this is sadness, this is neutral, this is laziness, this is this, this is that. So that's just a normal process. You recognize it. And then, what is insight then? Okay, now I have this thing called laziness. How did it arise? I have, a, internally I have the mind. Externally I have this laziness. And now I'm conscious on it. And when there is consciousness involved, there is contact. Contact leading to feelings. What is it? It's a neutral feeling. Or it could be a pleasant feeling, or whatever it is, one of the three feelings, and then to, whether depending on how you like or dislike it, you go in that track. So dependent origination is right there. Paticca Samuppada is right there. So that is the way of seeing it in, with insight. We have done it in other retreats and uh, often times when you read the sutras, you see that's all the Buddha wanted us to see. 
he wanted us to see how each experience is manifested and how it is connected with dependent co-arising, Paticca Samuppada, and how you can catch it uh, at the root as you are practicing. So less and less thoughts, less and less defilements affect you. And when you do the practice longer, uh, you become free, free from bondages. Stay unaffected by, what is the language here? It said, uh, not caught up in any worldly consideration. Yeah. Because you are seeing there is a feeling here until understanding and full awareness come about. So understanding is that, okay, now this is the process of that feelings experience. And then full awareness is that, I don't want to get caught in that. And he remains established in the observation, free, free from an individual who is controlling the experience, not caught up in, the, in any worldly experience consideration. That is how to practice observation of the body. Which you, so when you go to the feelings part, you will see that that same thing that we'll have to do tomorrow. So some people who practice only this gain this thing called dry insight. Dry insight is called Shuska Vidarshana, like Vipassana, Sukha in Pali, Vipassana. That is just their insight has now developed and they can choose to do jhana practice if they want or remain continuing their practice without jhana experiences and liberate their mind from finally Okay, I have done this enough and now let me as well liberate my mind. So they keep, keep that determination steady and then they do liberate. She's uh, liberating, the one way to experience uh, liberation, freedom. So wisdom cultivation is what we are doing and wisdom is liberating. We began from wisdom and definitely we end with wisdom. So when you see it practically, there is no way you can forget it because this is nothing to do with you know, remembering it. It's just seeing it. So you are free. Any more questions? Good question. So you've seen the cycle and you also have done it over and over again, but the emotional content is still there. So what is the remedy for that? What is the remedy? Don't? Very good. When and in Dharma language, that's called jhana practice. Jhana is actually holding space, making space as well. Removing these hindrances is what we do in the very first jhana. No vivicceva kamehi, vivicceva kusalehi dhammehi. That is the Pali. So. Vivicceva kamehi is free from sensual experiences. Akusalehi dhammehi, here refers to free from hindrances. 
So when no hindrances affect you, when you have made space there, which is also so much freedom when you are free from five hindrances, it's a great relief. And that gives you more space for your wisdom cultivation. So emotional um, baggage has no, no footing in that experience. What, what are the hindrances? Sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, doubt and restlessness. What a freedom when those things don't affect you anymore because of your tranquility practice, samatha practice. Like we discussed in the morning, this side exists because of that side. Insight exists because of tranquility practice. These two go together like the two sides of a coin. Always remember that. So jhana practice that way um, is what will help us when we have done enough of seeing the cycle. Okay, this is the cycle. Okay, here's another cycle. Here's another cycle. But my emotions are still there. What is the remedy? Jhana practice. Not for every character. Some characters naturally are tranquilized. Some others are very analytical. Some, pe some others are into faith and chanting and all that. So different characters, they, they, they need to choose what, what is fitting for their practice. So, and that's why some people are able to do powerful things using their mind because they have different abilities. So, uh, I think that answers the question. We only touch the first jhana, and if you do the second jhana, you are also free from thoughts. Avitakkang avichara. When you go to the third jhana, there is uh, equanimity, born from the first jhana and the second jhana. When you go to the fourth jhana, just mindfulness and just your, your mindfulness and equanimity is the only thing. That, is, that means there's only so much balance and that is undisturbed mental state. You're like, this is so good, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back, fall back to the third jhana or the second jhana or the first jhana or to where? Hindrances or to sensual experiences see the declining process. You don't want to go there. There is a danger there. So you, you want to remain in the fourth jhana, where there is so much happiness, so much freedom, so much relief, and you love it. We need to remember, remind ourselves that more sitting, more quiet time, like you said, making space. I th you didn't mean jhanas, but that's a good, good phrase to use, making space. In a way, to, in order to make space, we need to empty the mind by removing these hindrances. You're saying we can let it disappear, but how many times you can do that, right? Every, every time emotions come up, do you want to wait until they disappear? Or you'd rather have a good, solid practice for, before even they arise, before even they disturb you? There you see the difference. So trust, uh, trust in trust will guide you. Trust in what he, the Buddha taught. Only problem is that we don't sit long enough to explore. You know, come. We are going back to that same problem again. <laughs> in two days retreat, we only can achieve so much. Yes. You had a question? I just was going to say about jhana. So it's very hard to comprehend it if you've never attained it, which is my question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hard to comprehend it. It's said that to gain real insight, the first time you're in jhana, you're going to use your hands to examine the process. 
I wouldn't say that. Not necessarily. I would always say tranquility and insight go together. And you have insight in the jhana practice also. You are not analyzing so much, then you get caught up in the process of analyzing. Don't want to do that. You enjoy the jhana. You know that. Next job is to get to the next jhana, not fall back. That way, that insight is helpful to you. And how you do that is using your own wisdom. Now there's a danger going back. Let me as well remain here and continue. So uh, you end with practice insight also. You end with both insight and tranquility. You begin with insight and tranquility and end with insight and tranquility. But your insight experience will be better when you have tranquility established in a solid way. That's why people say you switch to insight after tranquility. But I say from the teachings and from experience that they all have to go together. From those are like water bottle and your torch in the journey, in the beginning of the journey and also at the end of the journey. Tranquility and insight very, very much necessary for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that, okay, there is a path, there is no traveler. Right? You understand that with Dhamma knowledge in the beginning of your practice, you understand that at the end of the practice, with now, with verification, with uh, confidence. In it. Okay? You got six more minutes before we finish. You had a question. No, you did. You were trying to ask and then you were like, hmm. <laughs> You shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I'll just, just say that's a drama. That's a drama. That's it. So, you know, the tools are the tools. No, I'm thinking more of a drama. Just because I don't want to do it. Well. No, no, but I want to get the drama. It's just a It's funny when a doctor says donuts don't have positive thoughts. <laughs> You can have positive thoughts with the, with the donor. <laughs> really well, let me hold on that. Don't catch the, sna the snake with the tail. Don't catch the snake with the, the snake with the tail. When we catch the Dhamma the wrong way, you are never going to see the light. Mm -hmm. So I like your response. You shouldn't. Neutral, yeah, you shouldn't see even the, because there's a danger in seeing, okay, I don't want to see the donut, I want to be neutral here. What is the danger there? There is a person who is resisting, there is a, you know, person who is preferring that neutral is good, when in fact, because you have ignorance, the first link of dependent origination, you are thinking that being neutral is the response. No. Even you're supposed to be free from being neutral here. That's all we should say. You are supposed to be free from being neutral. But that doesn't happen at this, the first stage of seeing the donut. This looks like a donut. So, <laughs> you are not trying to do that right there. You know, you, you are seeing the donut, of course, when there is a desire to eat, eat that at home. These are basic practices. You just try to be mindful that, okay, this is not, this is not good. 
it's too much sugar, I'm not having it. But that has nothing to do with deep Dharma practice. You start from there, but that's not the end. Don't take it that seeing this as neutral and stopping it there is not the end at all. Can anybody explain that in better language? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Feelings teach us that they exist. They are just these are just feelings, and none of they have you, the refuge that you are looking for. Not even the pleasant feelings. Not in the uh, unpleasant ones. Not even the neutral feelings. Because there is a person who is thinking that this is neutral problem. That's a problem there. So we need to go beyond being free from feelings. That's why Nirodha is cessation of perceptions, cessation of feelings, cessation of consciousness. So how can neutral feeling... In the cessation, no feelings, no consciousness. Not just feelings, no consciousness, no feelings, no perceptions. There you are catching the snake from the head. <laughs> Can't bite you. Of course, we are talking about it hypothetically. hypothetically. The actual experience, as we already you know, discussed, you emerge from after the experience, then you analyze it, and then you realize, okay, this is the Dhamma that I learned right here in the Fonseca Center in so-and-so time. This must have been my experience now. Because you now had the experience, and you, you, are, you can only make conditions for this experience to arise. Only after emerging from it, you know, oh, there was no neutral feeling, there was no pleasant feeling, there was no unpleasant feeling, there was no consciousness, there was no perception. So what was it? I must have experienced cessation. It is confirmed from so much freedom that you feel afterwards, that you have lifted the burden. That's a good place to stop for today. It's 4.30. Okay, happy meditation. I'll see you tomorrow. And those who new people will join tomorrow, please put up with them. Um, we don't ex expect a big turnout because we didn't send a, a big announcement about this. Did anybody get an email yesterday about the retreat? Yes. Yes. From the temple? Yes. No. Not, from the temple. Not from the temple, right? Did I send an email yesterday? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I want to make sure why I am not getting these temple emails now that the Samahatma is sending them. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Huh?